Let's turn to the markets now. David Bonson is with us, and he's going to stay with us for a while on the show. First question about yesterday's market, David. Why did markets seem to sort of yawn, even though we had that huge jump in rates? Yeah, it's important to point out that markets had been going down in concert with rates moving higher all of last week. And so I think it was just sort of a but pause it was a big from that pop. heavy It was a big pop yesterday. Yeah, but it was really big last Thursday. I mean, That's the tenure moved up That's 15 true. basis points yeah. Thursday and and the Dow was down over 300 points. And so I just think a lot of that correlation was absorbed into market action yesterday. And even with the big pop yesterday on the long end of the curve, the um, Dow was only up 40 points. So it was sort of a, a, a bit of a pause. But the trend has still been a correlation between stocks and bonds. And what are we seeing today? I mean, the, the Dow is down in futures over 200 points right now. Uh, why do you think the investors are nervous? Well, the number one thing I always have to say as to why the market is doing any particular thing on any particular day is nobody has any idea because markets can do whatever they want (laughs) for no reason whatsoever on any given day. And that's the beauty of the free market. Go ahead. Yes, it is. Yes, sir, David. Um, Look, the market right now is jittery. There is not any news to push it higher. And this is the part I can't emphasize enough. The S&P was only up based on seven companies all year. Those seven companies are trading at 50 times earnings, and they are 34% of the market. The rest of the S&P, let's call it the S&P 493, they're (laughs) flat on the year. Okay, And so you really have a market that is expensive, it's pricey, and it's totally dependent on a lot of tech and very expensive tech at that. And so I just think right now, until we get into earnings season, which is a couple of weeks away, it's tough for the okay. market to really get a feel for where corporate profitability is. Well, we're going to be talking about the S&P 493 a little later with you. You're going to stick around with us. Thank yeah. you very much, David. Uh, let's let's bring David Bonson back in if we can and start with some uh, stocks in particular. Uh, David, let's start with Ford because it looked like there was some chance of them getting a deal with the UAW. They're pausing work on a $3.5 billion battery plant that was was really surrounded by controversy in Michigan because of the inclusion of the Chinese in that project. They're worried about being able to operate the plant during the auto union strike as well. What do you think about Ford? Well, we don't own Ford, and there's other reasons for that. It has nothing to do with this particular strike. I think people really need to see this as a great example of a permanent investing lesson. The news headlines and what's happening with the stock prices are often not one and the same. The stock prices of Ford, GM, et cetera, have largely shrugged off the uh, strike over the last couple of weeks. A lot of it just is based on the fact that they assume there will end up being a deal. Um, and a lot of these things are already priced in. And so that's an important okay. thing to remember about the way stock market works. Switching to tech, and, and let's talk about Meta for a second. They've got this new social media app. It's called Threads, and it's not seeing a lot of growth. They haven't done much in terms of competing with Elon Musk, uh, his formerly called Twitter, now called X. They rank near the bottom, in fact, of social media platforms, only beating out Tumblr. What do you think? Well, I don't think Threads has anything to do with what will happen with Facebook stock. And you'll forgive me that I continue to call it Facebook instead of Meta. I I call it Twitter instead of X because I'm too old to keep track of it all. (laughs) Um, Look, I I don't uh, believe that a company like Facebook with its giant revenues can be impacted one way or the other by a thing like Threads, which was really an afterthought. And so they have much bigger issues going on. It's a similar story, David, with Apple. The iPhone always drives Apple stock. They come do something else like AirPods. It just isn't enough to move the needle. Gotcha. It's down and out, down now about one and a quarter percent. Next one is Chat GPT. It can now, quote, see, hear, and speak, according to its creator, OpenAI. Users are going to be able to use the new feature in just a couple of weeks. What do you think about the stock? Well, again, it's it, you're talking about Microsoft's large position and there being a lot of other places that have a position in AI framing. But our position on AI is that investors need to be very careful because there's one of two things out there. I'll do this quickly. Either it is a real play on artificial intelligence and it's already priced in or expensive, 
or it isn't even a real play on AI, that there are different companies marketing AI and yet not really monetizing it. All right. Now, there's this dust up, an interesting dust up between Apple and Google. The Justice Department accusing Google of using licensing agreements to monopolize online searches. An Apple executive is going to be testifying tomorrow about it in federal court. He is expected to claim that Apple chose Google as its default search engine because it's the best product available and that Apple did not create its own search engine because Google already exists. What what do you make of all this? Is this too much government getting into business? It's too much government getting into business and it's too much business getting into government. I mean, that's the whole thing with these companies that want to use the government as an ally to put a moat around their business when it's convenient for them. But then they want government to go away on the other side of things. And so this is the problem I have with cronyism is I do not think the government needs to be involved. Let these companies fight it out. But they really are incredibly hypocritical about when they want government protection and when they don't. You know, Milton Friedman used to say the biggest enemy of the free market is not the socialist. It's the businessman who wants protection from the free market. So I think you're onto something there. Next one, David, we're going to take a look at Rivian, if we can, here. It's trading up about 2% right now. One analyst at Baird says they're going to win the quarter while Tesla continues to face hurdles and won't deliver as strong results. Come back in here. Who would you you choose, Rivian or, or Tesla on this one? Oh, I, I mean, we don't own either. And this is a, not a space that I uh, feel strongly about other than the fact that we invest in profitable companies and Rivian's losses are monumental. Yeah. And so uh, if you're talking about one quarter, then I have no take whatsoever and neither should the analyst at Baird because they have no idea what's going to happen in one quarter. All right. Final one. We want to give you input here because you're you're so bullish on dividend picks and you've got some of the best ones out there. Start with Cummins by the way. Yeah, Cummins, ticker CMI, is a brand new position to our portfolio. Um, You know, we run billions of dollars in dividend growth stocks. And for us to add a new name doesn't happen a lot. Cummins is an industrial name that has an incredible legacy business around diesel engines that we think has a really great growth opportunity in competing in the hydrogen engine space. In the meantime, has grown the dividend 16% per year. Wow. For 20 years. And we what really is like the dividend right now? Right now you can buy 3% yield at entry and okay. get that dividend growth. Uh, what about defense contractor Lockheed Martin? This has to be the last one. Yeah, only defense name we own. I just want to point out Lockheed also has about a 3% yield at purchase, also has great dividend growth, and is really the company benefiting most from many of the contracts that are inevitably being done right now in terms of uh, defense, certainly a lot of the missiles that are going to Ukraine. And I think that just big picture, Lockheed is so well run, you have to have Lockheed as a dividend growth name in your portfolio. Brilliant stuff, David. Thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. David Bonson. 